Okay, guys, I'm not gonna lie. I feel really ridiculous. Well, the donkey costume looks good. Look, can we just record this and be done already? You're the one holding us up! Look, here's the plan. Okay, we're going to Walmart and... Breaking news. Scandal in the upcoming election. Good evening, America. I'm rather not. We've received reports from multiple sources of all the major campaigns. With us now, live, is our very own Joan Walzanowski. Thank you, Rather. We have with us the three candidates. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Hi. Hello? I feel like an ass. Well, you are dressed like one. Nominee Josh, what is your response to the rumors that you support the enslavement of mankind by artificial intelligence? Uh... You are quoted as saying, I will unleash unholy Skynet upon them. What is your response? Uh, I have no comment. Are you willing to denounce the robot takeover of all mankind and not add to the collective of the machines overthrowing humanity? I'm willing to do anything. I just want to see plug-and-play compatibility. Oh, come on, man. Say it. Personal computers? Power down and stand by. Or hibernate. Um, nominee Dan, what is your response to the allegations that your OG listener won... Peggy is, in fact, not a real person and somebody you just completely made up on the spot. We're seriously not going to talk about what Josh just said. Answer the question, please. That is not true. Peggy is very real and very not made up. She's from Minnesota. Yes, Minnesota. And we met online playing video games online. Yes, we're friends, longtime friends. The accusations are preposterous. She's real and from Minnesota, and we met online. Show us the friend request. For the record, you have had conversations with this person. I did not urge anyone to say anything. Beyond that, I think it's very important to let the investigation take its course. But I want you to know that that is my clear position. She is a very real person. Well, I think that answers a question. Nominee Tom, of all the breaking news, yours is one of the most controversial scandals I've heard in my 24 years in the industry. What do you say to these allegations? <laughs> oh, 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 you caught me off guard here, darling. No, uh, of course, these rumors are completely unfounded, without cause, and just outright lies. So, you deny them completely? My attorney has advised me that I'm not supposed to answer. Did you tell your family at least? Why have you not commented regarding your whereabouts on the night in question? You know what? I'd like to ask one question. Everybody that can remember what they were doing on August 8th, 1985 to 2015, raise your hand. That's what I thought. Nobody's raised a hand. I think it's possible to forget. So I think this whole thing is just a preposterous... <laughs> Do you have anything to say for yourself? Yeah, let's watch a movie, guys. Not only are we taking Jade Martell to Midnight Special America, but we're going to take Kirsten Dunst to wag the dog, and then Willie Nelson to swing vote, Dennis Hopper to cool hand Luke, George Kennedy to Flight of the Phoenix, then all the way to Jimmy Stewart to Mr. Smith goes to Washington. Yeah! Grab your tiny flags and hop on the bandwagon, because we're hitting the campaign trail. Join Dan, Tom, and Josh on their whistle-stop campaign trail. Shaking hands and kissing babies all the way to Mr. Smith goes to Washington! Ask not what the fire pit can do for you, ask what you can do with the fire pit! And don't forget today. What's today? Election day, dummy. Well, I'm not even registered. I registered for you in the mail. Your vote didn't count. A single or regular ballot is holding up a final decision for the American presidency. So many. One American citizen will effectively choose the next president of the United States. There's a moment that the whole world will remember forever. Bye. You used to stand for something. Both of you. I know exactly what you mean, Andy. Do you? Maybe not. The only question now is, who are you going to vote for? 
Remind me again who's uh, running. <laughs> Good day, bots and listeners. Welcome back to the fire pit. I'm Josh, parliamentary name Reginald, and we've reached our third stop on the Whistle Stop campaign trail on our way to Washington. So far, we've dodged the army and watched a how-to guide on how to fake the news, and now we're onto a more positive affair, we hope. So hopefully... It is a good movie. I'm not expecting it to be, but hopefully it is. But to let us know what we're watching and who we're watching, the floor recognizes Thompson, we hope, might actually like this movie. Thank you, Reginald. Now just try not to get too mad there, okay? And then that's, that's exactly what you sound like. Wow, it's, it's incredible. But I am Thompson, congressional name Tom, and again, welcome constituents and chamber members. Last week, we watched Kirsten Dunst go from helping E.T., I mean, Jaden Martell, phone home in Midnight Special, to dodging fake bombs while holding Tostitos in Wag the Dog. Those Tostitos needed protecting. Do you know how fragile those are? Tonight, though... We get crooning with Willie Nelson in 2008's Swing Vote. And now to give us a round down on the film, the chamber calls Nigel to the floor. Of course, <laughs> assuming he's not too busy talking to Peggy or distracted by family or whatever goes into these air quotes. Thank you, as always. I'm sure you have already judged this movie on its movie poster and decided that you hate it. Either that or you just get your opinions from the internet like all the other contrarians. Anyways, I heard him commenting on the font and how it was uh, not good enough. You had your minute, angry man. Now let me talk. Your minute, angry man. <laughs> Me, 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 me. That's you. That's you. That's what you sound like. Anyways, I'm Dan, parliamentary name Nigel, and here, yes, tonight, we are watching Robin Hood Vote Between Drinking in Swing Vote, a movie released in 2008 to capitalize on the then presidential election between Barack Obama and John McCain. The general plot is through a hopefully, presumably, hilarious turn of events. The presidential election between Frazier and King Koopa comes down to Costner's character. Oh dear. Anyways, the movie was released on August 1st, 2008, a couple months before the general election. It has a running time of 120 minutes, so just at two hours. It had a budget of $21 million and a box office return of 17.6. So it wasn't a huge bomb, but it wasn't a hit. It premiered 6th in about 2,200 theaters. It grows $6.2 million in its opening weekend. Um, it was uh, alongside The Mummy, The Dragon Emperor. It's like the worst of the Mummy movies. It, it, it couldn't beat it. And I mean, this, this counts the direct-to-video Scorpion King sequels as well. Um, it was actually beat out by Journey to the Center of the Earth and Mamma Mia and Step Brothers and The Dark Knight. The number one movie for that weekend for its third but not last time, a movie that Tom actually liked. The Dark Knight, that is. The other movies, no. He didn't like them. Anyways, it, it never got higher than sixth, and it was only in theaters for like 11 weeks. It's got a 37% on Rotten Tomatoes and a 6 out of 10 on IMDb. And from when I was gathering information for the rundown this week, it wasn't exactly uh, well-regarded. Speaking of not being well-regarded, let's go into expectations. I will start with you, Tom, since I know you're already going to hate it. What are your expectations? Tom, he hates everything. Quiet, angry man. Dan- you got better things to do? Yeah, listen I do, to listen actually. To, geez, I'm, why don't you throw another tantrum, Josh? You know, guys, this I give up my I'm Friday going. nights hanging out with Peggy on Star Trek Online to do this oh. podcast. Peggy, air quotes. Anyways, moving on to expectations. Tom, I'll start with you. What are your expectations of this movie? What have you been reading about it? Well, I want to say that you're wrong. I'm not just going to not like this film or expect to not like this film. But yeah, looking into this film, it's pretty good chance I'm not going to like it. I think this is going to resume our track record of all three of us not seeing a film and all of us walking away and understanding why we never saw it. The cast, the actors, the director, the writers, nothing really good. Josh Michael Stern wrote and directed this. His own, This was only his second film and the film's following it i mean the film before it was never was which never heard of the ones after it uh bangkok dangerous uh not not the best costner i mean yeah he'd been in a lot of good stuff 
uh, like Field of Dreams and JFK and Dances with Wolves. And then he was in Waterworld and Postman. And this was in that not quite coming back to his career. And the rest, Madeline Carroll, Paula Patton. I mean, Madeline, she was young, only small role. Paula Patton, nothing but romantic interest until this. Kelsey Kramer and Dennis Hopper are the best ones. And even those guys have hit and miss. Uh, I hope I'm entertained. I want to be entertained. It seems like it wants to have a message. Just the whole, like, one person can make a difference in the election. Which, 2008, we really wanted that message to get that point across. So maybe there's going to be some sincerity in this movie that the trailer didn't express. Or the writing team and directing team. I hope they pull off. We'll see. But... No, I'm going to keep the bar on the ground, um, on the like on the bottom of a hill. That's kind of where I'm thinking of. Now, don't get too angry, Josh. I I know I probably stole a lot of your thoughts on this film. I didn't mean liking liking a film, but what are your thoughts? Oh, I'm fine. I'm perfectly calm, and I am completely collected. I'm not at all uh, surprised. Or any any way, shape, or form emotional about the fact that you're already judging this movie without seeing it. So I'm fine. I'm totally okay with this. But uh, no, my expectations about this movie are fairly low. But you know, I trying to think of a Kevin Costner film that I am not a fan of. Like I know when The Postman came out. Uh, what, what year was that? Ninety nine. I'd have to look it up again, but I think that's right. I remember it got bad reviews. Like people did not like it. They're like, oh, it's the follow up to Waterworld. And, it sucks. It's, it's no uh, Field of Dreams or Dances with Wolves, so it sucks. I remember them saying that. They sounded exactly like Tom does about every movie he watches. <laughs> I, I really enjoyed uh, I really enjoyed that movie, and I still come back to it to this day and still really enjoy that movie. I can't really think that there's a Kevin Costner film that I don't like. But um, honestly, I think what I'm expecting out of this film is I'm not expecting to be floored by it, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be, I think the only word I can really think of is wholesome. I'm expecting a wholesome film out of this. Something that I'm going to enjoy watching, but you know, I'm probably going to leave this one being like, oh, that wasn't the worst thing I've ever seen. I think it's going to be mediocre. Nothing super exciting, nothing <clears throat> super great. I just think it's going to be a, a nice, wholesome, mediocre film. That's what I'm expecting out of this film. Because I remember I wanted to watch this when it came out in 08. It's just one of those things that I never got around to watching because it just it didn't draw me in enough to want to watch it. That, and I probably watched The Dark Knight 600 times that year. Yeah, those are pretty much all I have on my expectations. Dan, are you still here, or are you out paying attention to your family? I'm here, Josh. If you're here, always... you can give your expectations now, if you're not too busy. I'm so glad your temper is under control this time, Josh, that I can uh, freely give my expectations of this film. And my expectations are, I kind of wish Dennis Hopper was playing the Mad Bomber from Speed again. Maybe that would make the movie a little more entertaining. And I said it during the selection review that Dennis Hopper passed away shortly after this movie was made. He, I think he passed away in like 2010. And I'm going to stand by my statement that I think this is the movie that did him in. Dennis Hopper was in Mario Brothers, and this is the movie that did him in. So <laughs> this movie gave him cancer, and it took cancer two years to kill him, or something like that. I, I don't know. I don't. I, I, I'm not sure what Dennis Hopper passed away from. I mean, I know he was he was old, so it's to be expected. But uh, I like Dennis Hopper. He's actually one of my favorite actors of all time. But he's been in some real stinkers. Mm -hmm. uh, the aforementioned Mario Brothers, and and he's been in a bunch of movies that are just terrible. Um, I think he just liked to pick roles based on the characters. But this movie actually served as one that he didn't like. He was upset that a lot of his scenes were cut from the movie, apparently. And he was, I think, not. I can't quote him directly because I don't have it in front of me, but he said something to the effect of, I had a whole character that was on the cutting room floor. So I'm, I'm not looking forward to that. That, and I'm looking at, like, I like Kelsey Grammer, and I like some of the other people in this movie. Kevin Costner, I've always kind of liked him. The Postman is not as bad as Waterworld, but it's still a three-hour movie that a story could be told in 90 minutes. I, I, that's my thoughts on The Postman. If we ever do that movie, I'll, I'll say that straight up. Three-hour movie could have easily been done in half the time. I'm just, a, like I said, Kelsey Grammer, Stanley Tucci, they're, they were also both in Transformers 4, and that movie gave me a concussion. <laughs> so not looking forward to that but although this isn't a michael bay explosion filled clusterfuck of a romp <laughs> but i don't even really remember this movie i mean i do but like you said i was seeing dark knight again <laughs> for like the third time when this movie came out so i don't even remember it 
And I mean, it couldn't even beat Mummy 3. Like, okay. I do find it funny that this movie's premise is the 2008 election comes down to one man when the actual outcome of the 2008 election saw Barack Obama handily defeat John McCain for the presidency. So that's kind of interesting. But no, I'm just not expecting much out of this movie. I don't think I'm going to hate it, but I don't think I'm going to like it either. I think I'm going to be kind of like, Hmm. meh. Hopefully it's not Swashbuckler. Oh God, I hope it's not Swashbuckler. But since we're talking about movies with Kevin Costner that we don't like, which means Josh has never seen No Way Out, this is a good time for the trivia. So what do you guys want to do? You guys want to play a game? Yeah, yeah let's play well, a game. Are you, you going to fuck it up this week? Well, I've changed. It. I, I give you guys gold last week, and I just have a feeling you're <laughs> going to fuck it up this week. <laughs> I do want it noted on the record that uh, my mother listened to last week's episode, and she did give an honest critique on the, my quiz from last week. And I will be completely honest with you. My mother, she absolutely hated it. She thought it was terrible. So thanks, Mom. Major boost in my confidence there. (laughs) Anywho, Dan, you were saying? Well, I've actually changed the format this week. We're going to play a little game. We're not doing IMDb reviews this time. Oh, come on. I'm going to go do a quiz. I'm going to ask you guys some questions. I'm going to see if you get the answers to them. And then I'm going to have a little bit of trivia for every answer. Oh, shoot. Uh, Hang on. Let me get a notepad open here. Pencils down. Remember how you bitched about me putting math into it? Now now you're making us do research and homework? Oh, there's no research. I told you guys to do research earlier this week. And there is no copying off your neighbor's paper. I didn't study for this test. No, you didn't. But hopefully you've studied our podcast because one of the questions actually involves our own podcast. Oh, shit. Oh, God. (laughs) Okay, so there's three actors you can choose from. Kevin Costner, Willie Nelson, or Kelsey Grammer. I'm going to start with one of you, and then I'm going to ask you to choose. Do you want Kevin Costner question, Willie Nelson question, or Kelsey Grammer? And then I'll choose one at random. You know, you warned me earlier this week you were going to shit all over this. (laughs) Did you listen to last week's episode? I did. Yeah. Fair. Payback's a bitch. And I already know the question uh, that you're going to ask about the podcast is, did Tom like this movie? The answer is no. But okay, okay. So we have to pick one of the three actors, and then you'll ask us a question based off that. Yes. And some of these questions have a bonus point attached to them. If you get the bonus point, obviously, you win. There's, I'm going to say... 10 points on the line. Whoever wins will get to do next week's trivia. And if neither of you win, I get to do this again. <laughs> no, Vito. I didn't Vito. Agree Double actually, Vito. Actually, Vito. Vito. <laughs> it was actually hard to research these questions while I was trying to work this week. All right. Tom, you lost last week, so call it in the air. Heads or tails? Uh, tails. It is tails. Tom, you get to go first. Ah, that's a good <clears throat> good start. Well, I'm, I'm feeling like some tossed salad and scrambled eggs, so I'm going with grammar. Okay, Kelsey Grammer holds what record? He holds a record in Hollywood. What is it? Long jump. No. Josh? Most seasons filmed as the character Frasier. Yeah, yeah, actually, um, he's the longest-running sitcom character ever. He started in season three of Cheers and uh, all the way to the end of Frasier in 2004, and he even guest-starred as Frasier in two other NBC sitcoms, Wings and I can't remember the other one. Oh, damn it. I thought that was a joke answer, Josh. Darn it kind of was. was. <laughs> Dan was going off, and I'm like, okay, where's the punchline, Dan? Where's the punchline, Dan? Holy shit, I got it right. Yeah, that was intentional. I am that good. So, Josh, you get to go next. Kevin Costner. Kevin Costner is obviously best known for playing famous, legendary, possibly fictional outlaw Robin Hood. He is, however, also portrayed three very famous real lawmen. Name at least two, and I'll give you a bonus point if you can name all three. Uh, I can only (laughs) name one. Which one? Um, He played Wyatt Earp. Was Wyatt Earp the character he shared with Kurt Russell from Tombstone? Because he played the same character, right? Yeah, Kurt Russell played Wyatt Earp in Tombstone, and he played Wyatt Earp in Wyatt Earp. Yeah, those came. Those that was one of those uh, two movies that were basically okay. the same thing. If you can get, if you can name at least one of the other two that he played, uh, you get the point. If you can name the other, both of them, I'll give you a bonus point. God, I'm trying to think of the movies that he was in. Yeah, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. I can't think of anything. You're gonna say uh, it. I'm like, duh. All right, Tom. So you got a chance. Uh, Wyatt Earp's already on the board. You got to name at least one of the other two lawmen that he played. Ay, 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 ay. Again, Wyatt Earp was the one I was thinking of too, John. Oh my God, the other one, one of them's one of his biggest roles ever. How are you guys not getting this? I, I, it's a cowboy one, and they all cowboys look the same to me. They might as well be Wyatt Earp or John 
Wilkes Hickok. Go ahead, I'm gonna say John Wilkes. Yeah, I'm I pretty mean, sure the guy who killed Lincoln's not a very famous lawman. You're gonna say it, and I'm just gonna. Right, nobody it. gets. Nobody gets the point. Okay, so he played Wyatt Earp in Wyatt Earp. He also played Elliot Ness in The Untouchables. Oh my God! Oh <laughs> my God! He most, he most recently, last year, in the Netflix movie The Highwaymen, played Frank Hammer, one of the guys who killed Bonnie and Clyde. Oh God! I even had like in the list of like movies that he was known for. I had Untouchables as the first one. Yeah, I should have given you guys a hint. Like, there's a beer named after this guy. Anyways, because nobody got that, I will go back to Tom. Well. You know what? I'd want to give uh, one of our highway highway men highway men highway men some love. Willie Nelson. All right. Willie Nelson's guitar is named after what famous Western star's horse? Bonus points if you also get the actor. Trigger, and that would have to be uh, Roy Rogers. Oh, Tom steals the lead. Willie Nelson. That sucks. Is I just listened to the episode. <laughs> of Conan O'Brien where he had Willie Nelson as the guest and they said that on the episode. Yeah. He's also- I just couldn't think about it. I'm like, what the fuck was the name? Fun bit of trivia about that thing is that he has had like every famous person sign that thing and it's on display before each of one of his uh, concerts. Conan O'Brien signed it. Yes. And it's a very old guitar that actually has a hole in it now. And yeah, it's an old, very famous. So, Tom, you get to choose again. Well, I, I got to go see my uh, therapist about this. So, Dr. Crane? Okay. Kelsey Grammer's a kind of an odd duck in Hollywood, and this usually puts him at odds with a lot of his Hollywood colleagues because he supports what? The Republican Party. I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to say gun rights. No. And technically, Josh got it right. That's the answer, the Republican Party, but Josh spoke out of turn, so he doesn't get the point. Oh, fuck you! (laughs) It was Tom's question first! We have a moderator that tells us to respect the rules. Holy crap. Wow. If only the actual political moderators could do such a good job. (sighs) Josh, you get to pick the next category. Do I? Yes. Really? Yeah, you don't get the answer right, though. No, you got the answer right. You just don't get the point. So bullshit. Oh, for God's sakes. (laughs) Control your temper, man. Hey, guys, guys, let's not fight while Peggy's here. Peggy is with us, right, Dan? Sure. Is she with you right now? Yes. Psychosis. Well, who, who are our actors we get to choose from? Kevin Costner, Willie Nelson, or Kelsey Grammer. I guess I'll go Kevin Costner again. You should be able to get this one. This one actually involves our podcast. Kevin Costner, who is in this movie tonight, has shared the screen with eight other actors in this, that this very podcast has done. We've seen these actors in other movies. Name at least four of the actors that Kevin Costner has shared the screen with. If you get all eight, you get the bonus point. There's three total points on this question. I really don't like this quiz. Only because you're losing. Let's see. No, we haven't done something with Ray Liotta. James Earl Jones. Willie Nelson. Damn it, that still counts. Yeah, damn it. Robert De Niro? No. A couple of them are, you're going to kick yourself when I say these movies. Oh, I know I will, because I can't think of all the movies that we've seen. Bill Paxton, was he in... Dance no, he wolves? wasn't in it. Oh, Dance with Wolves. Yeah, I'm just like, uh, why am I drawing blanks on the movies we've watched? So, so far you have Sean Connery, who he shared with in The Untouchables. You have James Earl Jones, who he was in with Field of Dreams. And you have Willie Nelson, who he's in with this movie with Swing Vote. So actually, technically, that's nine actors because I didn't have Willie Nelson written down. But yeah, that counts. Well, you also you just, you just need Sean you just need one more. I never said Sean Connery, so thank you. Oh, OK. All right. Well, that, that one doesn't count. I thought you said Sean Connery. Okay, my oh, bad. you said Sean. Yeah, I thought you said Sean Connery, too. I don't think you're going to get this one, Josh. And unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to get this one either. I can see... I you just got to name... Okay, I'll give you Sean Connery. Okay, he is Sean Connery, James Earl Jones, Willie Nelson. You guys, you just need one more actor to at least get the point. And I'll just name the rest of them off. He played Dr. Malcolm in um, Jurassic Park. Uh, glasses, Brundlefly, uh, Boopity Boppity. Um... Oh, God, it's... Jeff Goldblum? Yeah, Thank no. Thank you. Uh, we haven't, I think we've watched a movie with Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, we have. <laughs> we've watched Independence Day. Oh, we did. Duh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my See, God. I'm, like, I'm like throwing a blank. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. You know what? This question's stupid. You both get a point. Hey! Also, okay. technically, Kevin Costner was in The Big Chill with Jeff Goldblum. But it was okay. just from the neck down because Kevin Costner was a corpse. So... The other actors were, he has shared the screen with Tim Robbins in Bull Durham. 
He's in Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves with Morgan Freeman, who we also saw in the Shawshank Redemption. Oh my god, I forgot that. He shared the screen with Dennis Hopper in both Wait, this movie, Swing Boat. No, Morgan Freeman's in Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Oh, duh. I didn't even think of that, that movie. And Dennis I... Ho- he's, in the, he's in this movie with Dennis Hopper. And he was also in Waterworld with Dennis Hopper. Haven't, we haven't seen a movie with Dennis. I, I thought Dennis Hopper, but we haven't seen this movie tonight. Okay, like, yeah, so maybe Willie this one. Because we've seen right. a movie with Willie Nelson. We haven't seen Swing Boat, which would be our first Dennis Hopper. You're movie. right. You're right. This was a stupid question. I'm sorry. I didn't word it right. Anyways, he's also in Man of Steel with Michael Shannon. He was in Highwaymen with Woody Harrelson. And the person that we play a variant of his game, he's in JFK with Kevin Bacon. I almost said Kevin Bacon just as a wild guess, but... All right, all right, all right. You know what? That, that was a stupid question. So, Josh, I'm just going to give you another one. Uh, let's go Kelsey Grammer, because I'm, pro- I'm probably going to screw this one up anyway. No, no you're probably going to get this one. If you don't get this one, I'm going to look at you both negatively. Unless it's an X-Men time. question, I'm probably going to get it wrong. No, it's not an X-Men question. Probably going to get it wrong. <laughs> as well as being famous for playing Dr. Fraser Crane, what animated villain is Kelsey Grammer also famous for portraying? I'll give you both a hint. It's a very long-running show. Animated villain. I'm he, com- here- he comes back every oh, season. Oh, good. The guy who wants to kill Bart in The Simpsons. <gasps> his name. His name. His name. Sideshow Bob. Yep. Damn it. I couldn't oh. think. I couldn't think. All right. Uh, all, tied up, all tied up at three. Tom? I'm going to go with... Kevin Costner's been kicking my butt today. I'm going to go with Willie Nelson. Okay. Willie Nelson was once in very deep trouble with which government agency? Oh, I'm going to have to say the... Oh, no, wait, no. He he does a lot of drugs. So, the drug one. Josh? IRS? Yes. Damn it! Ah! Yes, he was, he, got in, he was in big trouble with the IRS, and... There's a story with Trigger about that. He was afraid the IRS was going to repossess Trigger and auction it off. So he gave Trigger to his daughter, who held it for like a year, and then gave it to him in Maui after everything had blown over. How can you hide a whole horse from the IRS? Uh, Because it's a guitar, and you can just put it in a case and then hide it somewhere. Oh, I kept thinking Trigger the Horse. (laughs) Yes, the Trigger the Horse from the 1930s to the 1950s. Yes, it's still alive into the 80s. All right. God damn. So one of Kevin Costner's most famous roles is obviously Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. What was the hit ballad associated with that movie? Bonus points if you can name the artist who sang the song. All I can think of is All for Love, but that was for the Three Musketeers. Yeah, that was Three Musketeers. This (laughs) one was... However, the guy who sings this song did sing in that All for Love. Yeah, well, this movie was so out of place that the director liked the movie, but he felt it was out of place, so the only time they got to play it was during the closing credits. Um, God damn it. You can almost hear the song. Because when it's all for one, it's one for all. I know that you have the lyrics way wrong on that one, too, but still, not that song. It is... According to South Park, the Canadian government has apologized numerous times for this guy's existence. Brian Adams? Yes. That's the artist. What's the song? We're men. We're men in tights. <laughs> <laughs> no. You're gonna, oh, it's right there. I can just I can hear the song. It's been a long time. Okay, Again, it's everything bro. I do, I do, I it do it for you. Oh my god! Oh, you're killing me, Smalls. Oh, we uh, know nothing about yeah, movies. Yeah, you know what? I am i don't even think I want to read the rest of these questions. Um, Josh is in the lead by two. Josh, you win. <laughs> these I, two titans have I won by default. Yeah! Just like the current election... Josh wins, but America lost tonight because this was stupid. This was a bad idea, and I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> no, no, right, this was... Dan, Dan, I don't apologize for last week's quiz. Don't you dare apologize for this week's. But, Mom, <laughs> tell me if you like mine better than this week's or not. My brain is just scrambled. Yeah, but, yeah this this quiz is stupid, so let's just... It um... wasn't a dumb quiz. I just think some of... The, I think that what you, if we do it this again... You need to definitely put limits on us. Okay. And definitely spell out which, if, if, not to go out of turn. Okay. <laughs> and or, maybe or more like a buzzer choice. thing. They'll let us do a buzzer, then we have like 30 seconds to answer. All right, all right. Uh, yeah, right. yeah all right. this, this is, is still the, a good idea. This, but... is the proto- this is the prototype, ladies yeah, and gentlemen. Like, Join our know, Discord. Last week's, last week's, we're trying something new. 
We'll see if it sticks. And maybe right. this one will be your because we each have like different qu- variations of the quiz or different versions of the quiz. So this can be yours. Like, ask about the actors. So okay. yeah, no, I like this. Yeah, although I'm a little miffed. This is the second time in a row I've lost to Josh. Well, I do have one question I didn't ask. What's that? No, I already no, won. <laughs> but that's like what the third time in a row you've lost, though, right, Tom? Oh, we have a movie to watch. Oh gosh. Oh, we need to get started on that movie, guys. I'm getting pretty late. I don't know. So, like, I don't know what's, <laughs> what's the losing streak right now. Tom has lost four in a row, actually. Oh Jesus! Am I the new Josh? Oh goddamn. Okay. All right. Anyways, that was quiz, and it was stupid. And um, I'm not sorry because I kind of had fun researching some of this stuff. That being said, uh, Tom, play the music. <laughs> Welcome back to another electrifyingly electoral episode of The Fire Pit. I am, as always, your interspersal host, editor, and electoral representative, Tom. And I agree, your state should have way more electoral votes than it does. Way more than that other state. You know the one. I want to thank you all for keeping on track with us as we head on down the Whistle Stop campaign trail to Mr. Smith Goes to Washington and making through Swing Vote with us. Now, there have been a lot of controversies and misunderstandings as we three carry on on our own campaign trail, but I'm sure that it's nothing we can't get past. Keep focused, keep calm, keep on track. But that said, it wouldn't be a political campaign without some obligatory ads. So let's say we get started with this and get... Evening America, rather not. More news on the developing scandals. We join our very own Joan Walzanowski with the nominees now. Joan, how are things progressing? Well, uh, not great, rather. Currently, the candidates are being very defensive. Have you spoken to them about the latest accusations? Not yet, rather. They're quite involved in their own- Wait, wait, wait. Where did you get these accusations from, anyway? These stories were leaked from each of your respective campaigns. You know what? I knew, I knew one of you two was gonna pull something like this. Oh, let's put the attack ad stuff behind us, you said. Yeah, this truce was BS from the start. Says Mr. Josh has a temper. I don't have a f***ing temper, I'll donkey punch the both of you f***ing douche if you say it one more time. Yo, you two have no room to talk. Nobody knows where those bodies are buried, and I will stand by that. I made myself look like an ass for you guys. And also, I'm dressed like a donkey! You know, you could take off the costume. I'm not wearing anything underneath! It's <laughs> hot in here! Jesus Christ, guys. In light of all of these allegations, what do you have to say to our viewers? Um... Um... Buy a computer from Rob's custom PCs. So give them a try. They won't let you down. But of course, if you want to be 100% guaranteed to get your product sponsored interruption-free, or just get our uninterrupted attention... You can always email us at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. It's curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Just put fire pit in the subject line and what's topically topical about your topic, whether it's for an ad, a question, a recommendation, a comment, and or a so forth, and give us your thoughts. And we'll take it, mark it, tally it, then never respond to it. Because everyone knows that the electoral is the only thing that anyone pays attention to anyways. That email, again, is curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Capital C, capital C, capital E, capital I, at gmail.com. <sighs> well, I'm getting word that someone from New Mexico just got their vote stuck in a machine again. So it looks like I'm working overtime. I'll let you get back to it, though. Thank you all for listening, and as always, good luck. And now to check on the team to see how they're enjoying their movie. That's, That's voter, voter fraud. fraud. <laughs> Jinx. So, so therefore, his vote would be invalid. So therefore, if the election really is a tie, it goes to the Supreme Court for the deciding vote.
We are four minutes into this movie and already it's bupkis. I'm honestly really curious about this movie and how the events transpire to where he becomes the deciding vote. Yeah, because you'd have to restructure a lot of American politics for that to be a possibility. Given that like a third of America doesn't even vote. Yeah. Also, also, apparently in this movie, he's either, this is like Kansas or Iowa. Well, it's not Iowa. There's no mountains in Iowa. Uh, <laughs> Hollywood, Iowa. Not Kansas. Well, then again, according to Criminal Minds, there's palm trees in Dayton. And according to Smallville, there's trees and valleys and stuff in Kansas, which is a fucking lie. There's not a <laughs> single waterfall that isn't a gutter leading into the sewers. Nobody knows civics. Why is he not smacking her? The daughter is smarter than him. Such an original concept. Right? Hey, it's Judge Dreinhold. He finally got work. Yeah, well, there was a Beverly Hills cop. Things really went south when he got fired from that fast food restaurant in Fast Times at Ridgemont High. So apparently this takes place in an alternate universe where, let's see if this is the 2008 election. That means Al Gore won the 2000 election, but was defeated in 2004 by Kelsey Grammer's Republican. I can see that happening. I mean, it's Kelsey Grammer. Wag that dog, yeah. <laughs> that kid is my spirit animal. Why it's important to vote. <sighs> because 12 years after this movie's made, our election will be decided between Joe Biden and Donald Trump. Vote! This movie's already given me anxiety. I don't know why. It just is. Is it because, like, in this movie's universe... The election coming down to Kevin Costner is a worst case scenario, but in 2020, the election coming down to Kevin Costner is kind of a best case scenario. Wow, Kevin Costner's really working to earn that Emmy. Acting. Wow, she is committing so many federal crimes. So we're not even 17 minutes into this? This film takes its time, yeah. No, it's not even that. It's like it feels like it's slow. Actually, I'm kind of appreciating the pace it's taking. It's setting up what the world is, like who the guys are, the candidates, this Kevin Costner human, the world think, around it. It's, it's it's like I said, I don't know why. I, I'm getting a certain level of anxiety towards this movie right now. I just think it, maybe it's just everything collective, like in real life right now with the election season. I'm just like, I want it to be over. But I want it to have the results I want it to have. I got anxiety about this year's election. About this year. I've got anxiety about 2020. Like, what are the astronomical odds that the uh, U.S. presidential election comes down to one man in a flyover state? So infinitesimal as to be impossible. I mean, I'm just kind of like, one, our whole entire election system isn't even based on the popular vote you have to carry enough electoral votes well, the to way win. uh the, you were gone when they was talking about it that's currently the way the electoral is is 270 they're like 266 to 267 new mexico is the deciding state electoral all the other states got their votes tallied up but still one man well in the way this state? is boiling down is it obviously that new mexico is the state is tied 100 percent even and his was the only uncounted vote, but he, he signed air quotes, kind of like Peggy is real quotes, to vote, but his vote wasn't registered because the device was unplugged. Mm -hmm. Okay, this movie is less realistic than Waterworld by this margin. On this bizarre day, New Mexico became relevant in the election. I'm excited. Yeah. Then they showed George Lopez, and then I lost it. Oh my god. <laughs> Shit's hit fans. Okay. He opened the door to about a thousand reporters. Did they, did they see me wanking earlier? Shit, yes. Is my monitor facing the wind? Oh, God. Oh, God. You know what sucks, though? He could still go in and vote third party. This doesn't seem that ridiculous by 2020 standards. It's like I'm watching the Biden campaign. <laughs> this just feels irresponsible. <laughs> in what way? Okay. This feels irresponsible for 2008. However, this <laughs> feels like the right thing to do in 2020. Let's just let the vote come down to Kevin Costner. Let's go find him and ask him who should do the job, who should be president, and let's just let's do that, okay? Let's do that. People like Kevin Costner. He was Robin Hood. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> okay hashtag not my robin hood 
<laughs> I like my Robin Hoods to speak with a British accent. Okay, so in what way would you want them to stroke your dick if this if your the vote was uh, left up to you? Hmm. Put me on the spot there. Okay, metaphorical dick stroking, not just actual yeah, dick stroking. Yeah, like what would they do to actually uh huh. like they brought him NASCAR and a petty guy. Ah, oh, shit. Um they fire Alex Kurtzman from every Star Trek from here on out. So basically you open the door, Alex Kurtzman is tied and gagged on your uh out in front of you and they hand you a shotgun. Oh no, no, no he shotgun. He didn't say kill him, he just said he loses his job. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't necessarily say that it's loaded. It's still a little bit more harsh than what needs to be done, according to Tom. You slowly see the uh the case rise up as he gets an <laughs> erection. So I'm literally fucking America's nuclear arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Is now visualize Trump? this, but with Donald Trump. Ooh. Is Zinko going to fast forward for you guys? Oh, there it goes. I'm not going to lie. In that 10 seconds where it was going to fast forward, this was a much better film. Honestly, so far we're about halfway through this film, and it's um, it's meeting what my expectations were. <laughs> I wonder if they named him Bud because Bud Weiser said we'll pay you five million dollars. I mean, I know Kevin Costner basically paid for this film out of his own pocket. He had to make sure he was going to get that money back somehow. I've never heard of a politician being in the pocket of big hydroelectric, but then again, this is two thousand eight. Al Gore's America. So this is a movie where the presidential election comes down to one man. And that's where your suspension of disbelief ends. You know, when you say it out loud like that, <laughs> Nigel. <laughs> stand back and stand by. No. I feel bad for Dennis Hopper. He's being criminally underused in this film. He is. Oh, my God, he is. I see why I, I, like he's so pissed off about this. Like. Well, he's not oh. pissed off anymore. <laughs> Too soon. Too soon. He died 10 years ago. Too soon. <laughs> okay, here's what I would do. Say that this was 2020 and I was in Kevin Costner's position. And, and I was being uh, given... The, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Not seduced, but... Uh, attention? Yeah, if I was getting that kind of attention from the president, I'd be like, all right, Mr. President, let's go for a run. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are evil josh i love it come on sir we're only on mile four i died two miles ago <laughs> you know one thing that i will appreciate of this film is they haven't thrown at us a love interest yet yeah i like that they haven't you know all this opportunity they had they didn't just force it in there because it needed to be in there now that's yeah, i honestly thought they were going to go that way with the um reporter character but i don't know oh no hold on we may have oh, too soon guys we may have still too might soon. They still uh, might, but they haven't what? shoved it down our throats yet. You can tell Josh doesn't watch sports because he would know that you don't talk about a no-hitter when one's being pitched. Oh, my God. This, oh, my God. This shit is brilliant. This is, holy shit. Why isn't this film more like this? Oh, my God. I know he's been dead for 10 years, but I've figured it out. I am writing in Dennis Hopper's character from this movie on my ballot. Ooh, how the turntables. I hate both of these characters so goddamn much. Replace Bud Johnson with Donald Trump and everything he just said. Just saying. I'm sad again, Josh. Thank you. Hey, that's Major Kira. Holy shit, oh it is. Oh my God, it is. Slap him. Yeah. I want to see another presidential debate in 2020. No, you don't. Okay, this is the most unrealistic thing about this movie. Politicians having a conscience? Pathetic and sad. Pathetic, sad, if you will. This film promised to make me laugh. It has, just in all the wrong ways. Why is he driving? He's 12. It's the Midwest. Does New Mexico count as the Midwest? I don't think so. I know in Kansas, I remember girls in sixth grade were driving. Wait, and what? I remember thinking, well, they were daughters of doctors. So they had a convertible at 12 and they were driving on school grounds in middle school. 
Kansas is a whole different world, man. Gee, many Christmas. Yeah, you guys say you're from a small town like Piqua. I laugh every time. What kind of movie is this? It's all over the goddamn place now. I'm kind of impressed and also at the same time not surprised that they didn't make her the love interest. Well, the movie's not over yet. Also true. It's like, Tom, it's like Dan says, don't pinch a, a smart hitter, especially at the last right. touchdown of the final inning. That's not at all what I said, but um, <laughs> I guess it's close enough. Why do you want to bet the movie gives us a cop out, though, and they don't actually show who he votes for? Sir, you're supposed to be asking questions. And normally it's the candidates that ramble. <laughs> Is there a time limit for the moderator? Boo. Oh, my God. Boo. Oh, fuck, I called it. Boo. And now, back to the episode. No. And, and and I would just like to say for the record, I called it. You did. You did. I thought they were going to... I just, I had this feeling because they, they made such a big deal in the movie of not making you hate either candidate. So I knew that they were going to do something like they're not going to show you who wins because neither candidate's a fucking asshole. Uh pissing me off. I honestly thought it was, it was a little something smarter and have him vote for his daughter. It, a symbolic gesture because he, she's the only one he trusts to be in charge. Because She's the only one that's proved to be competent and want to care about the nation and the symbols and all that bullshit. But nope. You were right, Nigel. Fuck this film. <laughs> uh... I mean, part of me is kind of hoping that there's a post credit scene where it shows the machine break again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to talk to you about the election initiative. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, let's do some final thoughts here. All right, gentlemen. Do we want to wait till the end of the it's uh, not a credits? Mar- it's, it's not a Marvel movie. There's no after credits. Uh, there's no after credits. Yeah. No. Uh, this film would fuck that up, too, I'm sure. This Josh, is- I do believe you have summary tonight, though. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> okay, so this movie was actually a fairly simple plot. Basically, it started out with uh, Kevin Costner is a drunk and a bad father. His daughter is a very politically motivated, hyper-motivated young lady. She really pushes him to vote on election day. He gets drunk and forgets it, so she basically commits voter fraud and votes for him. Somehow that manages to become uh, the one vote cast that was not counted, so he somehow manages to become the only vote in millions and millions of people and such an infinitesimally small chance of him being the deciding vote. Now he gets to vote 10 days from now, so we get to sit and watch the two candidates do everything in their power to sway them to their sides by completely flip-flopping their stances. There is some family drama. Uh, He realizes that he is a deadbeat. Um, Find out the wife was a druggie. Um, And then he gets his shit together. And then he uh, goes to cast his vote. But we don't get to find out what his vote is. Because this movie just doesn't know how to get its shit together. Well done, Josh. Just finished my summary. (laughs) <laughs> Although you, you, the one part of the summary you missed out was the reason why his vote is the one vote that doesn't get counted is because while she was committing voter fraud, the machine got unplugged. Honestly, I don't think it matters. Nobody cares. Nobody yeah. cares. We're nobody cares. So, but th- uh, that was a great summary, Josh. I'm not gonna lie. Um, better than I could have done because I don't care. And <laughs> since um, Josh, you uh, you just did the summary, uh, you're up. So what are your final thoughts going into this movie? Or okay, coming, so out, coming out of this movie. Coming out of this movie. Okay, so I want to say my final thoughts um, relative to my expectations. I was expecting something wholesome. I got something regarding, but this honestly felt rushed. It felt like it had a lot of good parts, just nothing quite put together very well. Like, the whole broken family situation. I felt that that wasn't fleshed out as well as it should have been. Um, I don't want to be the armchair director for this film or writer, but the film felt like it was all over the place. Like, we said it time and time again. Dennis Hopper was criminally underused. I thought Kelsey Grammer did a great job. They did a fantastic job of making you fall in love with those characters. I thought there was a little bit of satire peppered in here and there. But all in all, it was bland. The movie was just bland. And I think that even boils down to the ending. Dan, you called it. You said, like, what is it, like, five, ten minutes before the end of the movie? I don't think they're going to show us who he's going to vote for. And when you said that, I'm like, 
You're right. They're not because it just felt like that was the best they could do. Everything in this movie felt like it was just good enough. Let's show bits and pieces about him being just whatever, but we're not going to fully flesh any idea out. I don't know. I just, it had some good parts. I thought that his speech at the very end was good. I thought that Kelsey Grammer and uh, Dennis Hopper's performances were good. I thought that some of the elements in there could have formed a coherent story, but all in all, I just felt like it was poorly pieced together. It was like two hours of bad editing. Blah. (laughs) This is the best way I can describe this movie is blah. Don't go looking for this movie. For some reason, if it comes up a conversation and somebody's like, did you watch Swing Vote? Don't say you did because they might ask you to watch it with them. Don't say you didn't. Be like, I, yeah, I saw it. I didn't hate it. I didn't like the ending. Then just drop it. You'll never be forced to sit down and watch this movie, and they won't force you to watch this movie because they may like the movie. I could see this as a movie that people be like, oh, I love that movie. You're dumb. (laughs) <laughs> accept it no this movie was very mediocre but dan i am definitely curious to know your thoughts on it well because you did call that ending i just i called the ending because i just i saw it coming i'm, I'm like it was about uh two-thirds of the way through the movie and i started to realize that they haven't gone out of their way to show either candidate as hateful or unlikable if this was a real election, I would have had a hard time deciding between Dennis Hopper and Kelsey Grammer's characters, or, you know, I would, I would have, it just, it would have been one of those, like it would have come down to maybe two or three issues as to where I would have voted. So I kind of saw the ending coming. I'm just the only way that this movie can go. This movie can't show Kelsey Grammer get defeated and they can't show Dennis Hopper get defeated, especially after both of their aides, like Stanley Tucci, who is Kelsey Grammer's aide or chief of staff and uh, Nathan Lane, Dennis Hopper's chief of staff. Both of them were like good chiefs of staff. They weren't like underhanded minions, so to speak. And I liked the two presidential candidates and their campaign camps so much that I, I, I kind of agree with what Tom was saying during the movie is I wish the movie had been more about those two and Kevin Costner and his daughter were more background or they were like the B plot and the, the two campaigns trying to figure out how to campaign to one man was the main plot. Cause honestly, I, I didn't even really like Kevin Costner's character until about, Oh, I think there was only about 15 minutes left in the movie. Um, yeah, it was uh, until he had his obvious redemption start, right? Yeah, and his daughter was annoying because it, she was in that Hollywood camp of kids are smarter than adults, and no, they're not. But she had her reasons for being the way she was. I mean, her mom was a drunk or a deadbeat. Kevin Costner's character is trying to do what's best for her, but he's failing at it. And mom's not even trying. And it's always been kind of like hammered in my head, at least, is that if you try and you fail, it's not as bad as not trying at all. It it met exactly what my expectations were going into the movie. I didn't think I was going to like the movie, but I didn't think I was going to hate it. It fit the theme of this particular road on our way to Washington. But um, yeah, I'm I'm, going to be in no hurry to go and find this one again with that being said uh tom i'm interested in your final thoughts on this film hang on i got a spoiler for you he hated it (laughs) well up until the very end i was generally okay with the film it had the platitudes that you always see with all of these political films every four years Why don't the politicians think of the little people? If only we had a candidate that meant something who was honorable. Blah, de, blee, de, boo, de, blah. Which honestly hit way more this time around considering the past four years. But I digress. That ending. That ending, I agree with you both, was just such a cop-out, bullshit, safe ending. It took me from indifferent to absolute vitriol loathe this film bad endings can kill a film and it did this one and it's a shame there were some decent moments of competence and a few sections of brilliance the kitchen scene with the mom i that was tense as hell it's like did we walk into a different movie because This is legitimately uncomfortable. These feel like human beings. That was one of the few times Kevin Costner's dad and the daughter felt like human beings and not cookie-cutter Hollywood caricatures. 
the directing on that was great, you know, how they framed it all, you know, the political satirical ads that they had when both parties flip-flopped on their respective policies. <laughs> it's hysterical. Hopper's pro-life ad was so dark. It was genius. But everything else, I'm just going to parrot what you guys have been saying. It's bland. It's it's beige. Oy vey. Yeah, like I said, it's just it was one of those movies where like the characters around the main character were better performed and better written than the main character. And maybe it's because they're although it's it's unfair to say Coster doesn't have a presence on screen because he's 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 been in movies that have performed really well. But I mean Dennis Hopper and uh Kelsey Grammer, I like I said, I wanted that I wanted to see more of that. I wanted to see more of that story than um, just what we got. I agree. You had like three movies trying to compete at once. The, the political satire, the dad trying to do right by his daughter kind of deal, and wholesome political America message during election season. And none of them really just, they just tripped all over each other. I can see why Dennis Hopper was upset with this film when he said, yeah. I, have, I have a whole character that ended up on the cutting room floor. I loved every scene he yeah, was in. He did I, a great I, job. I want to see those scenes that ended up on the cutting room floor. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting thinking about like what you guys just said about Kevin Costner and about how he's just like this Joe Schmo character, Billy Everyman type person. Mm -hmm. He did a great job of portraying that on screen. He didn't have a presence because his character wasn't supposed to have a presence. Mm -hmm. His character is literally the generic, run-of-the-mill, small-town American. And he think he did a great job of that, but I just don't think that that character should have been as I important. I definitely agree with you on that one, but I disagree. He went; They went too far with the incompetent, bumbling dad stereotype that they always do in these... I'm not saying that they didn't. But they definitely took the stereotype to the nth degree. Mm -hmm. But they made him so very generic. And then, like, like I thought the daughter was doing good until you started pointing out those flaws. And then how she's, like, basically, like Dan said, the, or the smarter than all the adults. And I'm just like, okay, now I hate her. Thank you. Well, Tom Again, was I, the one that pointed it out that yeah. he didn't like her. I was indifferent. But once Tom was like, oh, I can't stand her. And I'm like, you know what? I hate her, too. <laughs> it's like... I just, I'm so tired of that. I'm just so tired of those characters. And, you know, maybe Keep it was... Keep in mind, this is 12 years old, so we hadn't had those beaten to death yet. It feels like that, that plot device is just everywhere. Yeah, yeah. I blame 2008 for this. Uh, but overall, no, I hate this film now. And Paula Patton was criminally underused. Why, why was she even freaking there? I don't know. Uh, I think she the wasn't moral even of this story is every actor was criminally underused because they definitely didn't showcase Kevin Costner's ability as an actor. Or anyone's. You had Tucci. You had Nathan, Nathan Lane. Lane. Kelsey Grammer, Dennis Hopper, Paula Patton. I mean, you had actors in this film that can act. Let them act. You know, I, I like to, to parrot Chef Gordon Ramsay when he talks about ingredients. When you have quality ingredients, you need to let them speak for themselves when you cook. That's this movie. They had quality actors. They may not have had the best A-list actors Hollywood can have, although Dennis Hopper's up there. But they had quality actors, and they just underused almost every fucking one of them. And it's just mm -hmm. irritating. It's really irritating that they they burnt the custard, so to speak. You know, it's like it's it's really irritating. Um, In better hands... If they weren't trying to get it rushed for election year, maybe they could have made this into something. I think that's all I've got for this film. Yeah. Well, actually, one more point. I will. I did agree with Josh. I did like how they didn't have an unnecessary love interest in this movie. I will give this movie that. That actually doesn't surprise me much. My expectations were that she wouldn't be just because Hollywood has a tendency to be very wary of interracial relationships in films. If I'm going to get meta about Hollywood like that, I've picked up on that in a few films I've watched in the past. Like, oh, Hollywood, what are you doing? Well, less so nowadays, but I can see back 2008 and before this time frame, 2008 was such a different place in cinema. I mean, that's the year we got Tropic Thunder. <laughs> and The Dark Knight. And The Dark yeah. Knight. And Thunder Iron is Man. one of those movies, those recent movies, that people say that, you know, they couldn't make that movie today. 
Just because, I mean, look at the jokes in that movie, just the type of movie that it was. It's like you couldn't make that kind of movie today. Mm-hmm. 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 That was just 12 years ago. Yeah. But that, yeah. like, I honestly think that, Tom, you might be partially right on that interracial thing, but, like, shit, look at just this year alone. Sonic the Hedgehog. I know it's completely different from this movie. I actually consider that a better movie than this one. It's got its own merits. But, uh, it's like the main character is in a very interracial relationship. Oh, Sonic banging one of the chicks? Oh, no. The, I think uh, that's bestiality there, Josh. No, 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 Tom. Tom, I love that that's where your mind went. This is your candidate, folks. No, I'm disturbed. That's where his mind <laughs> goes. That's where his mind went. No, 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 no. You forget Cyclops is the uh, headliner on that film. But no, his, he's in a very interracial relationship with a black woman. It's like they didn't even acknowledge it in the movie, which I thought was great. I love seeing that in film. Being that I'm pretty much in an interracial relationship right now. I've, <laughs> but I mean, I've I've said all I can say, and Tom and Josh have said all they can say. So that does it for tonight's episode. Uh, thanks again for listening. As a reminder, you can find us on Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, Google, wherever you get your podcasts from. Be sure to like and share, and subscribe, so that you're always notified on new episodes dropping every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern. We are perfect for your Wednesday commute or your Wednesday afternoon at work. And if you'd like to interact with us, uh, please join us on Discord. The link is in this episode description, and you can find it at firepit.podbean.com. We have plenty of social media platforms, like we're on Facebook now, and we have a Twitter. Find us there. Again, links are going to be in the description. So please leave feedbacks. Give us uh, ideas for movie pass. And if you do join us on the Discord, we are having polls for our election. So uh, we ask you to come in. Voice your opinion for the uh, better candidate. And we all know it's okay. It's me. But uh, come join the fun. That's all I'm saying. And don't vote for Tom. Unless, as Josh said, you want to vote for the good candidate. In which case, T is a way to be. As I am pleased to be a candidate, I am also pleased to announce that we now have a Facebook and a Twitter. So all kinds of social media options for the Fire Pit. Links to both are in the episode descriptions on firepit.podbean.com. So be sure to follow us there for the latest news and updates to the podcast. Of course, you can email us as described in the interspersal segment. And I'd like to segue into some shout outs. Special shout out to Desiree and Laura, who have joined us on Facebook, two of our several joinees to Facebook. Hopefully they are caught up by now or they're starting to get caught up. But welcome to the fire pit. May the fires be bright for you. Uh, I would like to shout out to some of my family who is now listening. Pam, Chris, hello. Thank you for listening. And as always, Sync Lounge. Not to take away from my family members listening to this, but Sync Lounge, you once again proved that you are an amazing piece of software. Because we tried watching using Plex's new built-in watch together, and it didn't work. But Sync Lounge is old reliable. So, thank you, Sync Lounge. It is a free service offered to anybody who has a shared Plex library. Never change yeah. horses midstream. Yeah. I think we saw a movie about that. I don't remember what that one was, though. I just look back on last week and I cry. <laughs> and I, I, of course, would like to give a special shout out to Peggy, old school OG friend of the channel, who is, in fact, a real person. Fake uh, news. You are fake news. Um, she's real and uh, she's a really good friend and I appreciate her for listening. And I also appreciate the fact that she has joined us on Facebook. And I would also like to shout out to anyone who has joined us on Facebook, including Rob from Rob's Custom PCs. And a good friend of mine from high school named Christine, uh, or Christina, she has recently joined us on Facebook. So thank you very much. Thank you for listening. I hope you're listening. I hope you're enjoying the podcast. Don't listen to the first three episodes. They're rough. <laughs> of the day. Just ignore those ones. Um, they're not canon. So uh, go with that. And um, that's all I have. Those are the shout outs I got for tonight. So Josh, you want to send us out of here? Yeah, I think that does it for tonight's episode, so be sure to tune in next week as we follow us Dennis Hopper to another film that Tom will probably hate. Wrong again, Angry Man. We are following Dennis Hopper to the classic film, Cool Hand Luke. But if Dan's not too busy playing games, I'm sure we'll see you next time. I'm sure I'll find the time to join you guys for a movie again next week. Uh, until next time, bots and listeners, I've been Dan. I've been Tom. And I've been Josh. Thanks for listening. This has been a production of Curtain Call Entertainment, LLC. Good luck out there. You forget.
get we've got pictures. Hey, my lawyer paid you. The check cleared. I confirmed it. Look what happens at the Cincinnati Zoo. Probably shouldn't have happened at the Cincinnati Zoo, but damn it.